Shabbat Shalom. This is Larry Mitz with Friends of Israel. Today we are going to conclude our study, our four-part study, on the holiday of Hanukkah. The events of the first Hanukkah, which took place in 168 B.C. and once to 165 B.C., uh, is a foreshadow of a future Hanukkah, which Jesus spoke about. Now, if you go to history books, you might have a day or a year or two off from the 168 B.C. and 165 B.C., but those are approximately the dates of that took place on that first Hanukkah. The first Hanukkah was actually prophesied by Daniel in Daniel 11, verse 31. An arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. Daniel spoke of the abomination of desolation, which was fulfilled in 168 B.C. with Antiochus Epiphanes defiling the temple. Now, <clears throat> the date on which it occurred, occurred on someone's birthday. I'm not talking about Jesus. I'm talking about Antiochus Epiphanes' birthday. On the 25th of Kislev, or the 25th of December, 168 B.C., Antiochus Epiphany sacrificed a pig on the altar and erected an image of himself inside the temple, the body of Zeus, the head of Antiochus Epiphany, who thought that he was God manifested in the flesh. Exactly three years later, on the 25th of Kislev, Antiochus Epiphany's birthday, the Jewish people liberated the temple from Antiochus Epiphanes. And uh, from that point on, the Jewish people celebrate the dedication of the temple on the 25th of Kislev, which would be the equivalent of the 25th of December on the Gentile calendar. Now, Jesus spoke of a future abomination of desolation. So the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel in chapter 11 spoke of the abomination of desolation which was done by Antiochus Epiphanes. But in Matthew 24, verses 15 to 17, we read, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, Stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. And let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Now, notice in verse 25, Jesus has one word, and that's the word shall. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, he's talking future tense. He's not talking about the abomination of desolation that took place in 168 B.C. He's talking about a future abomination of desolation. See, the events that took place in 168 to 165 B.C. is a foreshadow of the abomination of desolation, which would be committed by a future uh, Antichrist. And we read about that in 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 to 3. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So he, 
Antiochus Epiphanes erecting an image of himself in the temple on his birthday, the 25th of Kislev, is a picture of a future abomination of desolation which will be committed by the Antichrist. Well, how do we know it's the, talking about the Antichrist? Well, we see that in verses 8 and 9 of 2 Thessalonians 2. And then shall that wicked or that wicked one be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. In the book of the Revelation, we have a further description of the abomination of desolation, the future one that will be done with the Antichrist. Revelation 13, 11 to 15. And I beheld another beast. That other beast is the false prophet coming out of the earth. The earth in the Old Testament was a reference to Eretz Israel. So many people speculate that the false prophet will be an apostate Jew. And he had two horns like a lamb <clears throat> and he spoke like a dragon. So he reminds us of the Lamb of God. He reminds us of the Messiah. But he speaks like a dragon. He speaks like Satan. And he, the false prophet, exercises all power of the first beast, that's the Antichrist, before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so he makes fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that that image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast would be killed. So like Antiochus Epiphanes, the Antichrist will erect an image of himself in the third temple, forcing people to bow down and worship the image of the beast. Now like Antiochus Epiphanes, who murdered thousands of Jews during that first Hanukkah, the Antichrist will likewise murder millions of people who refuse to bow down and worship him. And his primary focus will be upon the children of Israel. And the dragon, that's a reference to Satan, was wroth with the woman, reference to Israel, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandment of God, and we have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So during the seven-year tribulation period, it'll be a time of great darkness for the chosen people, as the Antichrist, like Antiochus Epiphanes, will come after the remnant of believers, Jewish believers. Now remember, the Maccabees were able to overthrow Antiochus Epiphanes. Eventually, the Maccabees defeated the, Antich or the Antiochus Epiphanes, and they were able to rededicate the temple on his birthday, the 25th of Kislev. Well, during the second Hanukkah, which will be committed by the Antichrist, there also will be a Savior who will come. This time it's not the Maccabees, but is the Messiah. And we read about this in Zechariah 14, 1 to 5. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations, all Gentiles, against Jerusalem to battle. The city shall be taken, the houses rifled, the women ravaged, and half the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. 
Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley. Half of the mountain shall remove to the north and half of it to, toward the south. And ye shall flee into the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach to Azel. Yea, you shall flee as you, as, as you fled from before the earthquakes in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall, shall come, and all the saints with thee. You know, when he comes back, he's not going to be very happy. He's going to come back and he's going to pour out his wrath against those who dared to fight against the chosen people. We describe, we, Zechariah 14, 12 describes the return of the Lord this way. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord shall smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongues shall consume away in their mouths. The festival of Hanukkah is a picture of a future Hanukkah. A future Hanukkah which will be more severe and more terrible than the first Hanukkah. But in the end, Messiah returns to redeem his people and to set up his kingdom, which shall never be destroyed. This is Larry Mitchell. Shabbat Shalom.